before I get started this morning, um, this is one time, and, and you'll never be asked to do this again, so don't ever try it. I'm warning you. I need to leave here. I need to walk out of the door by 11.15. And so... Eleven fourteen. Eleven ten. So please, please help me. Never again. It won't ever happen again. Uh, before we get started, I, I I want to just mention a couple of things that um, I that have really um, blessed me the last couple of days and that is the extent to which the family of God seems to come together at a time when we need it the most and um, we um, got the call about um, Don and uh, we're a small church and you don't know all that right there's just not a whole lot of people and that family is a very, very, very large family. And uh, so immediately we wanted to do everything that we could. And, and I just want to thank everybody who has helped out. But I just want to tell you how it all came together. Amy had called and said that, uh, um, that they got a call from the neighbor lady that said she wanted to fix ham that would feed the whole family and that she would have it there and sliced and in a roasting pan ready to go and delivered and it was like well thank you lord we don't have to worry about that Amen. i had called thera and thera within just probably 20 or 30 minutes called me back with a list that she had already got of all the stuff that her family the galloway family um, Beulah's fixing this and brenda's fixing this and mom's fixing this and i'm fixing this and robbie's fixing this and all of the help from the families and and then Beulah saying that the Nazarene ladies would help cook some of the food and that Beulah and another lady would go over and help during the dinner and then um, I got the phone number for the lady that runs the fellowship hall the, at the Methodist Church in, in Petroleum and she says well our ladies would like to help too and so we'll be helping and tell us kind of what kind of food you get and we will pick up the slack and so I said, well, we have this. And, oh, and then she said, we'll provide all the paper products, glasses, silverware, all of that stuff. And I said, well, you know, we have somebody bringing a coffee. Oh, no, we'll do the coffee. And I said, well, uh, Miss Vicki had said she would make uh, lemonade and uh, tea. And she said, oh, no, we're going to do that. And so it has all come together. And it's, it's just, it is a blessing to see, for me to see that the Church of God, the Church of Jesus Christ, whether it's, it's people that we know that we're all family. And so today, thanks to that fellowship that we have with, with other Christians and other churches, that they are able to step up and say, we want to help. And uh, thank you for all, all of you for everything that you've done. And, and I'm sure the Addington family will be very, very thankful and appreciated uh, for what you've done. At, I. Um, have concentrated on so much on cooking that um, and I knew that I, I had to cut it short this morning so I got kind of a little last minute um, word for you and I titled it God, God wants all of you and I don't mean all like all of you as a group I mean he wants all of you what does that mean to you or to me well um you know what it means, but I, I, he wants us to love him. He just wants us to love him. And he wants us to love him with all that we have. You're familiar with the scripture out of Deuteronomy, and that is chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. You shall love the Lord... My, thy God with what? All. All your heart. All your soul. And all your might. Love here is the, his desire. See this starts out. What are we talking about? What is it that, that this verse says? 
It is the love. Thou shalt love. See, God desires our love and our adoration. And we all know that we love him. I know you do. I love him too. But to be real honest with you, if I am loving him to the extent that I should or that I even desire to love him, then I have fallen short at times of my goal or my desire or my plan. Because it's all about love first and number one is our relationship with him. Even, I mean, be the church and the fellowship and all of that is important. But number one, high importance on our list should be our relationship with him. And um, I um, want to, I want to just read you something real quick, and it's, it won't take very long. I, I'm not as prepared this morning as usual because I usually have my Bible bookmarked so I can flip to it real quick. See, this is out of Deuteronomy six five. But what Moses had told them, it was, it was not too long after they had gotten the Ten Commandments and, and all of the commandments and all of the things that the Lord said that they should do. And, it, and he says, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it that, it, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. And then he said, and, and, and hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And he had said, number one, and I, the reason I read that to you is he said, make sure, Israel, that you observe to do it. In other words, that you set your mind or you set in your mind a plan that you are going to carry out this relationship because how many knows any relationship all relationship are, are there's two sides to a relationship right um, but he had said if you observe to do this or if you do do this if you do these things it will be well with you and that you may increase mightily in the land that you're going. So our desire then, God's desire is for us to love him, and our desire is for us to love him more. I, I, you understand what I'm saying when I, can you look at me and say this morning, Terry, you disappoint me, I think you should have it all together. I think you should be able to come up and say, do as I do, and I'm not saying that, I'm saying you do as the word says to do because we all strive. I don't think as long as we are here on earth that we will ever always be loving him as much as we desire to love him. I, I do have a desire to love him and I have a desire to love him more and more often. It doesn't have, it does, it's not saying that I don't love him, but I always want to love him more. So we have to practice that desire that in, is in us because his love is always available to us. See, it has already been provided by him. It's available to us. It is just our, um, our job or our practice or our intentions is to spend or to, to do more with him. He also says that he wants all of us. See, he wants our whole heart. He wants our whole heart. And how many people, I mean, all of us uh, some, sometimes protect our own heart, right, from other people because we don't want to be hurt. We don't, we've been hurt before and we don't want to be hurt again. And so we build up these little walls around our heart. But with God, we don't have to do that. See, he's not going to hurt us. He will never hurt us. So he, we can give him our whole heart. We can tell him every secret. We can tell him every thought. He already knows it anyway. We can tell him and discuss all of these things with him. We don't have to worry about it coming back to us later. We don't have to worry about it getting on Facebook, right? That's right. Um, Psalms 119 says that God wants all of you when it comes to seeking him. 
Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with what? The whole heart. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies or obey his word, that, that knows his word and does the things that they know that the Lord wants them to do. But see, this is kind of like a, a, a two-part thing. Like when you tell your kids, I want you to do this and this, and then you'll get a popsicle. Well, they'll go off to do the one thing, and, and they're ready for the popsicle. He says, here, blessed are they that, number one, we keep his testimonies, or we at least try with all of our heart to do as the Lord would want us to do, keep his word, remember his word, and that seek him with the whole heart. So in other words, you're doing the best you can. You're being obedient to God's word. You take a time and a moment where you are seeking him with all of your heart, not just word, not just words. You know, sometimes we just flip them words off real easy, like, oh, Lord, I just want, you know, while well, we do it to, to, like Kevin does to me, you know, well, I love you, what time's dinner? <laughs> Of all the people that I know in all my life and all the grandchildren I have and all the children that I have, number one, best in the world, somebody that you could read the minute she opened her mouth was Amanda because when she was five years old, she'd come up and she'd say, I love you, Mommy. That don't mean a thing. That means I want, I want, I want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, hey, I got a list. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with the whole heart. With the whole heart, not just words. So he knows the difference. Have you ever sought God? Let me ask you this. Have you ever, see, see to really seek him, to really be searching for him with our whole heart, most of the time it's when we're in trouble. Most of the time it's when something in our life has happened and we need help. And when have you, but have you ever thrown yourself down on your knees or on your face or wherever when you're alone with God and cried out to God that He did not answer you? I never have. I've always got an answer. I've always got a lifting of, I don't say that He got me out of every situation I was in or that my problems went away, but when I've sought Him with my whole heart, I have been blessed. The things that I was dealing with, I know I'm not doing it all alone. Amen? In Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, And ye shall seek me and find me. Okay? We're going to seek him, and then we're going to find him when ye search for me with all your heart. So, loving God and giving it all to God is going to take a time alone. Don't you agree? It's hard. Together we can come together as a group. We can come together as a church. But there's a time that we need to just shut the door, get away from the kids, and get away from the nagging husband, and get away from the work, get away from all the worries that we have, and just sit down and seek him. And you know what? I take everything, we should take everything to God, everything to God, but there comes a time when we need to just seek Him to be with Him for what He is, just for who He is, what He means to us. Not, I have my own list, but you know what? It's, it's what Jeannie and Charles have been saying, we need to worship Him for who He is, not for what He does right? Not for what he can do, and we do worship him, and we need him for that, but we just need to come to him and sometimes not be like Amanda was as a child and come up and say, I love you, Mommy, and then you was right. You know? She knows it's true, huh? <laughs> she still does that. I'm glad she, I, I wanted to say it, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> Sometimes we do that to the Lord, don't we? I love you, Lord, now. And that's not wrong. But he wants our whole heart. 
See, his desire there is the love. Do you love me even if I don't do something for you? Do you love me? Even if the answer doesn't come right away, do you love me? See, God already has a personal, personal relationship with you. Did you know that? God has a personal relationship. He has. He has a personal relationship with you. It's already been established. It's done. It's not something that you have to do. Because he has proved his love toward us. Romans says that he proved his love or God, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, that's your relationship. That, then in, in that was your relationship with him established. It is established. It's established. Okay? Now Jesus says um, we have to continue in that love. I want to read this to you. I'm not going to have him put it up. It says uh, in John 15, 9 is what he told his disciples. He says that now, get, just think of this. He said, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Did you know that? See, you consider, and, and you can think of our Lord and Savior and the love that the Father had with him, and he is telling his disciples, and he's telling you and all of you, this, just as the Father has loved me, I love you that much. But then he said, continue in that love. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in that love. So continue on that. You know, press in it, pursue it, seek it, search for it. There's no love that God will ever hold back from us. Amen? Nothing. Have you ever felt loved from God? If you ever have, have felt that, that in a time of need or a time that God gave you something that you can't put your hand on, but you knew he loved you, you knew he heard you, you knew he heard you. Do you remember how blessed you felt? Just knowing that he heard you. Just knowing that he heard you. Just knowing that you, little peon, wherever you are, and I'm talking about myself too, that God Almighty, Father in Heaven, heard you and blessed you. I didn't say that he heard prayers. I, I, I don't mean that. Zip that off. Cross that one off. No. Nope. I'm going on. <laughs> I've had people tell me, and I know from my own experience, and you do too. You do too. And when you set your mind, whenever you cried out to God with your whole heart, he heard you and blessed you. Whether the thing that you were asking for was actually done is not, is not what we're talking about. We're talking about He blessed you. You knew that He has this personal... See, He has a personal relationship with you. The question is, do you continue on in that personal relationship? It's partly your responsibility to do that. Many years ago, <laughs> I started trying to memorize scripture, and I and and I had to work really hard at it. But I, one of the first ones I ever memorized, come out of Ephesians three, and it was Paul's prayer for the church. And I, I, I'm not going to go through that whole thing, but I want you to think of this this morning as Paul, Ephesians three, chapter seventeen. When Paul was praying for his church, he prayed for them that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. See, he says that when Christ dwells in your heart through faith, that you are rooted and grounded in love. Now that's one of those things that I say is a done deal. And I was thinking of this you know, once you take Christ on as your Lord, and He is your Lord, and you've made Him your Lord, He dwells in you. He's rooted and grounded, and we are rooted and grounded in Him. But I was thinking about this. Um, 
He says we're rooted and grounded in what? Love. The love that he has for us, the love that the Father has for us, and then the love we have for him, the love that we have for other people. But when Spooky was born, and she is six years old, she was six years old in October, I said to Kevin, Amanda was in Tennessee, I said to Kevin, Kevin, I want you to buy a tree and plant it on the day that she was born. And I want one of those tr trees that's got some pretty red flowers on it, or not flowers, red leaves. So whether it's a red maple, what is it? Red maple. So he did that, and of course when um, she came home the first time, and however big she was, I said, oh, we got to get out there and get that a picture of Grandpa and her... Uh, or um, standing by beside the tree. So, you know, here she is, and here's uh, Grandpa, and here's the tree, right? So now, last fall, I said, oh, it's her birthday. Do you need to go take a picture under the tree? And so here she is, here's Grandpa, here's the tree. It's rooted, and it's grounded, but it hasn't grown too much. And Paul says we are to be rooted and grounded in love. And Jesus said we're to continue on. Okay? Now, one of these days, that tree, how many, how many know if you've ever watched a tree? I, I'm a tree watcher. All of a sudden, it's like, they grow fast. See, it takes a while to get, you know, this little tree out front. When we planted it the first year, I'm looking at it and like, it's not doing anything. It's not going to live. It's not going to live. And then the second year, it's like, well, it made it through the winter. It's going to live. And then the other day I looked at that tree and I thought, wow, look at that thing. It's just full of life. Paul said to his church that we, that we are rooted and grounded in love, and, but we need to grow, right? We need to grow and we need to learn. Ephesians 3.18. Now, I like this. I used to read this over and over and over and over, and you should too. You should think about this. You should mark it down in your Bible. He said... He said, my prayer for you is that Christ will dwell in your hearts and that you'd be rooted and grounded in love and then that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Now just stop there. He's saying you're rooted and grounded in love, but you need to be able to comprehend how much, what he's saying, God loves you. How much God loves you. You know what? That comprehend, you know, how many of you know, we, sometimes we think from our hearts and sometimes we think from our heads, but we ought to have kind of like a, you know, a continuous flow. We either go one way or the other. But here, Paul says, I want you to comprehend. That's my prayer for you, that you'll, that you'll, that you'll get it, that you'll get it, how much God loves you. How much God loves you. How much He loves you. So I'm asking you then, do you know what the breadth and the depth, or the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of His love is? No, man. But our desire should be to comprehend that. I think if we could comprehend that, I don't know the, the breadth and length and depth and height of His love. Ephesians 3.19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And this is the one. I don't know. I, I say there's so many things that I love so much about the Word of God, but this is one of my very, 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 very most special verses. That to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. How many here would say to yourselves, I would love to be filled with all the fullness of God? Yeah, I would. I think about that all the time. He says to know the love of Christ, it passes knowledge. So now, wait a minute. A little bit ago, he was saying that he wished we could comprehend how much God loved us. And then he's saying to know the love of Christ, it passes all knowledge. 
but that we w might be filled with all the fullness of God. It's all about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. Did I say it was all about love? It's the, it's the love that God has for you, just the way you are. You know? Not, not just... God doesn't love somebody else more than he loves you. I think he should love me more, but he doesn't. No, that's just... I, 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 you know, I used to think... I don't know if I compared it to love, but I always thought there was something that God had done or given to other people. You've heard me say this before. It was my way of thinking that he hadn't done or given to me. That somebody else was more precious in God's eyes than I was. That they was more blessed in God's eyes than I was. That they, had, they knew God more. They, they could hear from God more. And, and you know what? It's all about relationship. <clears throat> If I looked at that person and I thought that that person had a, had a, a deeper love for God or, or more gifts or more blessings, it's only because they were giving their whole heart to Him and more than I was because God doesn't turn anybody away. He has just got all of this love that He wants to pour out. And you know, there are so many times that we just need to stop and say, Lord, you know what? I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. I don't know if we could take it. Do you? I've read certain um, old time preachers say, I had to ask God to stay his hand because I couldn't take it anymore. Have you ever heard that? You know, they were in prayer with God or they were going through the situation and they had put much, much prayer and all of a sudden God touched them to the extent they had to ask him to stop because they couldn't take any more. Now, it wasn't that they couldn't take any more pain. It was they couldn't take any more of that fullness of God, that they thought that they would explode if God poured any more out on them. To know the love of Christ then, Jesus said, as my Father has loved me, so I love you. Yet, it passes that knowledge, and we just need to know, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. We need to know and remember that Jesus laid down his life for us. You want to get to the Father, you want to spend more time with him, you start out by thanking him for, for sending Jesus Christ. Amen. And acknowledging that he, I know Lord, I know Father God, that Jesus Christ laid his life down for me. Nothing but a dirty, rotten sinner, right? That's it. Now you've opened up a door right there to God the Father. Now he's got all this love he's been waiting to pour out, and he's going to start pouring it out to somebody. Amen? Amen? Listen, I know that Jesus Christ laid down his life for me. Do you know that? All right. Let him love you. Let him love you. Let him love you. Never go to him and say, I know I don't deserve this. You do deserve it. If you can say, Jesus Christ is my Lord, you deserve it, okay? And let yourself love Him. Have you ever done it? If not, let yourself love Him. Number one, hold nothing back. Don't hold any back. Don't hold anything back. I love you guys. I love you too, Carrie. Nothing can separate us. The Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, okay? Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. <laughs> Spend time alone with him and let his person be your main focus. Not what he is going to do for you, not what you want him to do, not your list, which we all have. But just take a few moments just to love on him and, and worship him. And then just talk to him. Moses told his children, if you will observe to do it with your whole heart, then you will be blessed. It will go well with you. As you stand... <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word. And Father God, I just thank you for the love. The love that you have for me. The love that you've given me. The love that is mine and available to me. I thank you for your presence here this morning.